All right, sweet. Let's jump right in. So as you see from the title here, we're going to be discussing one of 3D printing's party pieces. That is, its ability to quickly and easily create adapters and brackets and sleeves, those types of things, to attach anything to anything. Now, sometimes these anythings that I'm referring to are simply just off-the-shelf components, things like corrugated plastic sheets. These are usually inexpensive, they're easy to come by, and you can buy them in like some pretty large sizes. But therein lies the rub for 3D printing, because why should I go about printing a large panel that's going to take hours, when I could easily just go out and buy it instantly? I mean, look at this dehydrator example for drying filament spools. I saw so many people printing the walls to increase the height to fit more spools, which is just so time consuming. I was able to do the whole thing in only 14 hours, which includes modeling, printing, buying the supplies, and the final construction. And so going back to our title slide here, that's why I use the word efficient. Just because you have the means to 3D print doesn't always mean you should. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. And 3D printing really is a great power. So with all that in mind, I wanted to share some of my own examples where I put these 3D printed adapters into practice. For starters, let's take a look at vacuum adapters. These are many users foray into using 3D printing for functional end use parts, largely because they are simple to model and they usually don't incur too much abuse. And yeah, there are a ton of versions. There are some online businesses whose sole purpose is to 3D print vacuum adapters. Anyways, a couple weekends ago, my dad was cleaning off all the pollen on our porch, and he always uses two vacuums. The rigid sucks a lot more than the shark, in a good way. But he has to use the shark because it has a better brush attachment and a better hose. He called me up and asked if I could 3D print some adapters to attach the shark's better brush and hose to the rigid. After spending some time reverse engineering everything and a bit more time building it out in CAD, I sent the files to the printer and had the finished products by the end of the weekend. Now I went a bit beyond here and I actually printed two adapters. So one that attaches the shark's brush to the rigid's hose and one that will attach the shark's hose to the rigid's hose. And everything ended up fitting really well, which was uh, pretty great since I'm not always this lucky on the first try. And the twist lock feature that you see here feels so satisfying. So pretty happy with how that turned out since there were so many dimensions that had to be just right. And my dad was really pleased with the result too. In fact, when I delivered them, he ended up immediately using the new adapters to vacuum out two cars, one of which was mine. So that was a really nice way to return the favor. Another example I wanted to share was a display case we put together for this hyper detailed model of Notre Dame. The Notre Dame Cathedral was printed on our Form 3L in gray V4 resin, which allowed us to achieve a large size, and the resolution is just insane. However, some of the more delicate details, like the lightning arresters you see here, make it so we can't take this model to shows. It's just too fragile to transport. And since it's pretty unfair to rob people from seeing the incredible quality prints the Formlabs resin printers are capable of, we decided to enclose it in some kind of display case to protect it. At first, we considered 3D printing the base and cutting five panels from a sheet of acrylic. However, acrylic is pretty pricey, and because the base is just a large, simple shape, 3D printing it is time consuming and just screams inefficient. So instead, we pounced on a great deal at Michael's and purchased a football display case. Now, there's no means of attaching Notre Dame to the base of this display case, and we want the cathedral to be removable, so we have to 3D print an adapter. Our plan was for the adapter to be bolted to the base of the display case and have it fit the internal contours of Notre Dame. As with the vacuum adapters, we set about orienting Notre Dame where we wanted it, 
reverse engineering and gathering our measurements and then building out the representation in CAD. Once the CAD model is complete, it's always a good idea to validate your dimensions using unit tests. These are minimally printed objects that capture critical dimensions and features without burning up too much time and materials. Using plane cuts in CAD is a great way to control the size of these isolated features. And as you can see here, I just wanted a section one millimeter tall. This takes only about 12 minutes to print, so I can go through and quickly iterate until I get the dimensions just right. At this point, we went about printing the adapter. Once printed, the adapter was used to mark the holes for drilling, and the holes were drilled out from the base. To switch it up a bit, heat set inserts were used to incorporate threads into our adapter so that it could be mounted to the base via M5 screws. We set our soldering iron to 325 degrees Celsius for this onyx material, and then melted these inserts in. Oh, and an FYI, when designing for heat set inserts, I recommend creating a hole 0.1 millimeters larger than the minor diameter of the insert, which is usually at the insertion end. Afterwards, the adapter was screwed into place and Notre Dame was fitted over it. And that's all there was to it. And if you want to see this in person, come swing by our Atlanta office or come see us at the NPE show down in Orlando, May 6th through the 10th. Now, the last example I want to showcase is the one listed in the title of this webinar, the airbrush spray booth I built. In my spare time, I 3D print, paint, and assemble scale models I've designed in CAD. And at some point, I had a project where spray cans just weren't going to cut it anymore, so I bought an airbrush. Only problem was, I needed a place to confine the overspray, filter it, and vent it outside. What I needed was a spray booth. Now online, the spray booth options are usually too expensive for the quality you get. And when you think about it, they're really not that complex. So I decided to go the DIY route. After doing a bunch of research on different DIY approaches, I decided I wanted a spray booth that could be deconstructed after each use for easy storage and low space consumption. I also knew I would need some corrugated plastic panels, a filter and filter enclosure, an inline duct fan and ducting, as well as lighting. So the real question was, how do I join this all together? Well, if you couldn't tell from the pattern so far, I needed to 3D print several adapters. First, I settled on using a Sterilite Tupperware as the filter enclosure, which serves as the keystone that everything will attach to, and it doubles as a storage bin for all the pieces when the spray booth is torn down. Then, I went about getting my measurements, reverse engineering, and building out the spray booth in CAD. Because everything will be stored inside the Tupperware, it's critical that the panels are set to the proper dimensions. This is why the roof panel had to be split into three sections. With 3D printing, you are not limited by geometry in the same way as you might be with CNC or injection molding, so the adapters here can be almost any size or shape. You'll notice that the right angle brackets that join the side panels to the floor panel are split into two. This is because they won't fit on the print bed in one piece. Don't ever let your printer's volume limit your designs. There are so many ways to split parts up and rejoin them afterwards. In this case, I used a plastic tile as the locator and some CA glue. Speaking of joining, I largely used button head machine screws and nuts to mate everything together. This gives the spray booth a very sturdy build. However, for the two parts that hold the air filter upright, I simply used a few neodymium disc magnets. This allows for a quick change out of the filter. Magnets are a glorious way to join 3D printed parts to other things. They are a simple but extremely effective way to produce a semi-permanent bond. Along this line, I also use magnets, bar magnets this time, for an easy connect, disconnect, 3D printed adapter to join the roof panel assembly together. 
If you can't tell by now, I'm a magnet hound. If you have access to 3D printers, stock up on magnets. For functional parts, they are indispensable. Anyways, I went about tackling the rest of the adapters to hold the remaining panels to the Tupperware. So, I mean, it's nothing too complex there. And the last items I designed were the adapter for the inline fan and the handle up top. For the inline fan adapter, I used a clamshell style adapter so that I could ensure good security since the fan is cantilevered pretty far out. All the parts were then printed in white PLA. Now I know PLA is not usually recommended for functional pieces, but in this application, it has the perfect amount of strength and it's cheap. The only exception was the fan adapter was printed in PTG, since the clamshell mechanism requires a bit of flexibility, so PLA is just a bit too stiff for this, PTG works perfectly. Now I could have used Onyx for this application, but since we use most of our printers and their materials for marketing and sales purposes, I didn't want to use it here because uh, the spray booth is, is really just a personal project. And once the proper holes were drilled in the Tupperware and the plastic panels, it was assembly time. Everything fit really nicely and it was ready to use. Here are some shots of me painting parts of my latest project, which is the droid gunship. One cool thing I experimented with on this project was a 3D printed stencil. It's only 0.2 millimeters thick, which is only a single layer, so it's flexible and easy to work with. For sealing the stencil to avoid paint bleed, I used this Scotch Create spray mount on one side. It's a light tack spray adhesive used a lot by scrapbookers and it works a treat. And that's a wrap. Appreciate you all sticking around for this one.